So today we wanted to demonstrate how to time align your audience mics in your broadcast mix. We had uh, quite a few questions about how to do this in a previous video that I did, kind of what some of the settings are specifically in the console, and then how to accomplish this in your space. All right, so what we've done here is we have a mix send and then basically a mix return of our live stream mix. This is what you're sending all of your inputs to. And the reason that we're doing this is because specifically on the X32, the only way to insert a time delay is to come out of the console and come back in and do a couple of inputs. So this is basically a send that we can delay. So they're coming in right here. We've set them up as a stereo pair on the X32, stream left, stream right. Basically, these are the sources that we're sending into our broadcast mix, but we want to be able to time align and delay this to our audience mics. In a big room or even in a small room, you get lots of different reflections, but you're gonna hear things at different times depending on where you are in the room. In a broadcast mix, those audience mics are really like your ears. So they're the listening position in the room. And so when sound comes out of the mix at one time and the audience mics pick it up at a different time in the broadcast mix, it can add echo, it can add reflections to the mix and it's not as tight. You also can't turn up those audience mics as much. You really start to hear the room noise and those reflection points. To accomplish this, what you're going to need is you're going to need to have a delayable source of your board mix and some consoles allow you to route that internally. Um, stems, different matrixes, uh, different consoles do different things. We've set up a couple of microphones here from our friends at micrentals.com. And you will also need a microphone on the stage set up in line with your PA. You're also gonna need some form of recording, a DAW of some kind. There's uh, different options out there today. You can even use a free trial. If there's a 30 day trial of something, um, you're just gonna need it for the, you know, just for the day to record a few tracks and accomplish this. So when adding audience mics to your broadcast mix, there's a few locations that are gonna be better than others at the stage pointed at the audience is a great first spot. And then further in the room, you can hang audience mics from a catwalk or from a piece of truss, something like that, that gets those audience mics more central to the room. And then also I like to use a pair of audience mics in the sound booth that are pointed at the PA. And those mics will actually pick up some of the PA as well, capturing even more energy from your mix. But keep in mind that the, the furthest back pair of audience mics are your ears. That is point zero that everything gets delayed to. All right, from here, I'm gonna send it over to Cade and he's gonna explain how to set it up on the board. To pull this off, you're gonna need a total of four bus mixes, and you're also gonna need two inputs in addition to your ambient mic inputs. And this setup assumes you're using a post fader bus mix for your live stream. This is the best solution for most churches. If you don't have your setup that way, I have a free course to help you out. You can get access to live stream sound made simple, using the link in the description, it's 100% free. So let's get this all set up. First, you'll need to pick two available inputs side by side, starting with an odd number, and I'm gonna use 19 and 20. And now we need to make sure these are taken out of the live stream bus, or we're gonna get some terrible feedback later on. So tap sends on fader and select your live stream bus, and then turn the fader all the way down on those two inputs that you chose. It wouldn't hurt to go ahead and mute those as well. Tap sends on fader to deactivate. And now head to the routing screen, out tab. Find two available outputs and set them to your live stream bus pair. I'm gonna use outputs three and four and set them to my live stream buses one and two. You'll select post fader for the tap point on both of these. Head to the XLR tab to make sure the XLR outputs on the back of your mixer align with the output sources that we just set on the out tab. For example, XLR 1 through 4 should be set to output 1 through 4, etc. And now you'll need to move behind the mixer and use two XLR cables to attach those two outputs to the two inputs that you chose earlier. In my case, I'm connecting out 3 to input 19 and out 4 to input 20. Back to the mixer. It's time to check your input routing. If you have all your inputs set to local, you're good to go. But in my case, I have everything set to user, so I need to head to the user tab and the input section to set 19 and 20 to the right inputs. So here I'm gonna set 19 to local 19 and 20 to local 20. Next, we need to configure the inputs. Select your first input, tap the home button, and navigate to the config tab. Tap link to link your two inputs together as a stereo pair. Set gain to negative 6 dB. 
You also want to make sure that all audio processing is deactivated so you don't have any surprises later on. And also, this is really important, be sure to deselect the mono bus and the stereo bus to make sure that these two inputs don't go to your main speakers. Now that you have inputs for both your ambient mics and your delayed live stream mix, you'll need to set up a pair of bus mixes to mix these together. So select an open bus, navigate to the config tab, and tap link to link the two buses together as a stereo pair. Also set your channel sends configuration to post fader. Make sure all audio processing is deactivated so you don't have any surprises later on. This is the final mix for your live stream. The only two things you'll mix in this pair of bus mixes is your ambient mic and your delayed live stream inputs. And the easiest way to do this is to tap sends on fader and adjust the levels of each using the appropriate faders. Finally, let's head back to the routing screen and out tab, select output three so you're ready for the next step. And now that your mixer is all set up, I'll send it back to Chris to walk you through finding the appropriate delay setting. So in audio time alignment, there are some different ways of calculating the distance between the microphone and your PA. And the most common is obviously going to be just using a laser measure. You can use this tool uh, to get an exact finite where you need to be measurement. But if you don't have a laser measure, you can also do the test that we're going to show you today, which is popping a balloon. I prefer to use both because one's an auditory source and then this one is the exact measurement and they confirm each other so you can uh, kind of double down on both. So in the DAW, what you're going to want to record are your ambient microphones. We have these channels right here. And then you're also going to want to record your delayed board mix. So what we'll do next is we'll hit record on the DAW. Now that we have all of those four channels recording, we'll go up to the stage to our microphone, we're gonna pop a balloon in that microphone. And what we're doing is we're recording the board mix source as well as the acoustic noise in the room in the audience mics. So we're gonna see the time difference when we come back here and then we'll start applying delay and figure out where we need to be. All right, so we've got our balloon. We've got our mic set up in line with our PA. We're gonna stand right in front of it. So this microphone does not need to be on coming through your speakers. What we're recording is just the board mix itself. So you can mute your speakers if you would like, uh, just you know, so you don't blow up your speakers. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we're gonna pop, we're recording back on the computer and we'll go take a look at the results. Just like that. So now we can take a look here in the DAW and we're gonna see, the more we zoom in, we're gonna see the time difference here on these transients. So that gap is what we're wanting to fill. So the audience mics are hearing the balloon pop later than the board mix. So what we wanna do is we wanna delay that board mix till these line up just right. So we're gonna apply some delay. And I'm gonna start off guessing here. This also, on the XR2, it's great. They give you feet and millisecond readout. I'm gonna go off the foot and I'm gonna say we're somewhere in the ballpark of 20 feet in this room. And let's apply that to the other output. So we're gonna do another balloon test and you can keep doing these as many times as you need to. <laughs> there we go. Let's see where we ended up. Looks like we're getting closer. Yeah, we're a little bit closer now. So I'm gonna apply a little bit more delay and I'm gonna guess we're somewhere in this, maybe another seven feet. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm standing in line with the PA and I'm just gonna point my laser measure at the microphone itself and take a measurement. All right, 27.9 is what we have on here. So let's go adjust the delay on the console. So 27.9. So now we'll go pop another balloon and see how it lines up. And there we go, we're right on. So this is why I use both things. The balloon is a visual representation of the laser measurement, just confirms that you are lined up. So we have our delayed inputs of our stream mix as well as our ambient mics, these four sources are what's getting sent to our final aux that goes to the live stream. In your live stream, so this is now our live stream mix. We'll do sends on fader and you can see. Everything's set at Unity, but you can adjust these to sound correct. What you'll find now is you can turn these audience mics up and you're gonna hear better clapping, better response, an overall better sense that you're in the room. When mixing audience mics, make sure you do add a high pass filter to cut out all that low end energy. You don't want that stuff bleeding in. Something I've noticed that the more uh, audience mics I put in the broadcast mix, 
I start to catch a lot of the sibilants from the microphones that are coming out of the PA. A great trick to solving this problem is just putting a low pass on those audience mics to just help shave off some of that high end. That's information that you don't really need in that and it just cleans up the mix. Usually for the high cut, I'll shave off about 10K and above. And the low cut is about 300 and below. So if you need any more help or have any more questions about your broadcast mix or audio or video or lighting in your church, feel free to find me. I'm on Instagram at bridgeavl and we'd love to come help you. We'll travel nationwide and you can find a link to that in the description as well. We'll see you out there.